I got scammed trying to buy 3D printer parts. Today I'll explain what happened, where I was careless, and the steps that you can take to avoid being scammed too. I'm making this video for two reasons. Firstly, to call out a dodgy company that tried to scam me so you can avoid them. And secondly, to give you tips on how to do your homework so you can avoid falling into such a situation. Let's jump into what happened to me. This story actually starts a few years back with my review of the Alta 4 3D printer, which after I made some fixes, was good at pumping out decent architectural models. And that's why I donated it to my architect friend. Since then, it seems like it's had a particularly hard life and it's come back to me in a state of disrepair. I don't know if he kept it in a bakery or something, but this thing has had a very hard life. Some of the problems like this were quite obvious, but other ones not so much. Such as something crazy happening to the Z offset, but more seriously, the temperature output for the hot end and the bed being locked despite the heaters not being on. To repair this printer, I decided that it was best to replace the obscure mainboard with one that I knew. The only trouble with that was that I couldn't get it to talk to the obscure LCD, despite spending hours working out the pinout and experimenting with changing wires one by one. And during this experimentation, some of the solder joints cracked and rendered the LCD useless, so I had to buy another. I knew from the firmware I had previously compiled that this was an ANET full graphics LCD and that's what I had to buy if I wanted it to match the metal case. None of my regular suppliers had one, so I hit up Google, the top result being Amazon. But unfortunately, that was currently unavailable. AliExpress I use all the time, but I was in a bit of a rush, so I wanted something local. The other results weren't forthcoming, but I did notice that the top ad was for a company that seemed to be in Australia. So I placed the order and received a confirmation email, and shortly after that, an email confirming shipment. A bit more than I wanted to spend, but ultimately a convenient solution to get the printer working. But as you can probably guess, things didn't go to plan. A few weeks later, I received this in the mail, a USB lavalier microphone. The package had no sender information. I was confused, but I quickly forgot about it. About a week later, I was wondering where the LCD was, so I clicked on the tracking link from the email. And now I was even more confused because it said the package had been delivered. I didn't notice it at the time, but this picture didn't match either. Thinking it must have been a frustrating but ultimately honest mistake, I went to their website and clicked the contact form, explaining that I had received the wrong package and asking how they were planning to fix this. I think it's important to always give companies a chance to fix their mistakes, but their reply made me really angry. And so the response read, Dear Michael, thanks for your message. We are sorry that you were misled by the information on our site and that you expected to receive something else. The ordered article includes only the lavalier microphone, see the photo below. But the product's name relates to the different product and we definitely need to change the description. Therefore, we want to provide the following solution to compensate for the situation. You keep the product and get 40% of the purchase amount refunded to your account. I hope you can still use the product or make someone else happy with it. I'd like to hear from you. Kind regards, Sam. According to Sam, it's a mistake that I made, but even so, they're still willing to refund 40% of my money. What a great guy. Well, let's look at the evidence. Well, that screenshot Sam shared really does depict a lav microphone, but that definitely does not match what was listed in my confirmation email, both the title as well as the picture. And in the shipping email, again, it's very clear that I've ordered a RepRap LCD and not a USB microphone. If we head to the site, we can see some very dishonest editing has taken place. The title of the item is still for a 3D printer part. The description for the object is still for a 3D printer part. And it's not until we click show more that we get any information about a USB microphone. Now, obviously the picture no longer matches. And if I had come across this page in its current state, there's no way I would have placed an order. But at the time it wasn't like this and everything looked legit. In fact, Google search result still points to the old page with the original image. Clearly, I had fallen prey to a scummy scammer, but even so, there was definitely things that I could have done better. Now, I went straight from Google to the item page for what I wanted to buy, but if I had looked at the main site, there would have been more warning bells. Firstly, the name. It's pretty strange and sounds like they sell granddads, but maybe that's a translation thing, even though the subdomain implies that this is an Australian site. Next, we have a notice on the left-hand side, 
informing the customer that they've already been busted for intellectual property breaches, so that's our first indication that we're not dealing with good people. Next, we have a notice that says free shipping, yet when we go to the shipping page, we can see that we do have to pay for shipping, unless we're willing to have long shipment without tracking, and already they're giving themselves some wiggle room to get out of disputes. We have a notice saying that they sell more than 5 million products, and when you think about it, that's a ridiculous number. At best, it's a huge exaggeration, but more realistically, it's just plain dishonest. It should also be said that a site that sells such a wide range of products typically has no expertise in really specific things such as 3D printer parts. In this instance, I didn't explore the rest of the site and made the incorrect assumption that they only sold tech products. Some of these clues aren't exactly obvious, but fortunately there are other resources that are much easier to check. Fortunately, us humans tend to look out for each other and what I really wished I'd done was looked at some review websites. We can see on productreview.com.au that grindado.com has an average of 3.6 stars out of 5 from over 1,000 reviews. That's not exactly a great score, but if we look at the newest reviews, they're almost all 5 star and they're glowing in their praise. It's almost as if there's been some sort of manipulation. In fact, my original review of this printer highlighted some serious safety concerns and the mainboard of the printer needed to be soldered and repaired before I could even use it. And after my video, suspicious comments started appearing, praising the printer and saying how good it was. Fortunately, one of my patrons, Jeffrey, spotted this and called them out. Because five-star reviews can't always be trusted, we can actually learn a lot more by reading the one-star reviews. And when we do this, we all of a sudden are flooded with a large amount of reviews that talk about the incorrect product being sent, if it's even sent at all. Let's look at this review from a customer named Sean. He was sent the wrong item and then contacted their customer support and was asked to keep the wrong item at the discounted price, which sounds awfully familiar. When reading reviews, you'll always find people who live one star with unrealistic expectations. But what's concerning here is that one star reviews make up almost 30% of those posted. A better known review and rating website is Trustpilot. And immediately when we search for this company, we can see that they have a notice detecting misuse on the page. Apparently they offer an incentive for 5 star reviews which is against the policy, and is obviously unethical. Again the stats are similar, this time with 40% of reviews being bad, which means there's more 1 star reviews than there are 5 star reviews. If we tick to filter the 1 star reviews, we get a similar story. More customers with products that are incorrect or don't work, with customer service offering a discount rather than a full refund. Again, any company will have jaded reviewers that leave one star, but it's hard to ignore this overwhelming volume of complaints. I think what these scammer sites rely on is people not doing the homework like me, but they also rely on other tactics to stall you and weigh you down until you run out of options. For instance, on productreview.com.au, we can see of the 310 one star reviews, only 61 people bothered to do a return claim. And this is quite often because the company will make you jump through hoops and basically waste your time before they'll accept a return. Although if you check in the fine print, you can see there's a way to avoid those delays entirely. The other problem is that unless the product is received in perfect condition and in its original packaging, the claim will likely be voided. The other thing I always do is pay for whatever shipping has tracking, even if I'm not in a particular hurry. A lot of the one star reviews concern never receiving an order. And without any type of tracking on the package, it's way too easy for the company to send nothing and just say that it's delayed or lost in the mail. A lot of dispute procedures also have steps that you need to follow with time frames. And if there's no concrete date for postage, even after you open a claim, the seller can just stall and stall until these time limits expire. You may be wondering if my case has been resolved, and fortunately, yes it has. I got straight on the front foot when they tried to blame it on me, I supplied screenshots of my emails to prove that they'd changed the listing and called them out for their scam, telling them that they needed to refund me 100% within 24 hours. And in the face of this, they did, reviewing my return request and coming to a new conclusion that the product does not need to be returned and I would be receiving a full refund. And they did follow through, so why am I still making this video? Well, despite clearly trying to scam me, Sam had the gall to send me a follow-up email asking me to rate their customer support as if they had done me a favour. They also sent me another email offering me paid incentive to give them a good product review. And I guess people are easily bought because there's still 5 star reviews that outline problems with misleading web pages for people in similar situations where they didn't get what they ordered 
and the customer was blamed for the error instead of getting a full refund. And that's why I've made this video, as well as putting an accurate and honest review on Trustpilot, to warn others about this dishonest company. This video is hardly a Mark Rober quality scammer expose, but if I can stop some people from being taken advantage of, then that's what I'm going to do. As for fixing this printer, I'm going to have to get creative using other parts that I already have on hand. That's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy safe 3D printer part purchasing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.